Sorry, folks. Hey, Co yep. Coach, go ahead whenever you're ready. Thank you. Good. Uh, practice has been good. We've had a, a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, the guys have uh, worked hard. Uh, we've got more numbers than we normally have because we've got 13 new guys with the 12 early enrollees and Ty Chandler. And then you've got your, your super seniors. So we're, we're practicing hard. We're, we're being very physical. We're able to do some things this spring that we weren't able to do our first spring. And then obviously we lost, uh, we lost last spring. So um, that was it. We've told the young guys, you've got to learn the scheme before you can start competing for a job. So kind of like uh, when Sam Howell got here, even with Drake, we, we won't, uh, we, we talked about the, the second uh, team quarterback a little bit, but we probably won't make that decision until the fall because Jacoby's working now, Jefferson's working now, and, and Drake's learning what to do. So we're, we're trying to, to make sure that the young ones get a feel of things before it goes too far. Um, guys that have stepped up, Jeremy gave me a few questions I'd answer for you here before I answer your questions. Uh, William Barnes has, has had three good days and hopefully today was good. I thought it was. And um, uh, so we, we need him to step up and, and he's down to, uh, he was, when we got here, I think he was 342 and now he's 320. So he's in good shape and he's competing. So that would be a real plus for us. Uh, if, if he gets an opportunity and, and, and takes it. Uh, the tight ends, uh, Kendall Carr has been slowed by some lower body stuff, but uh, the other three tight ends are doing really well. Uh, Garrett Walston's up to like 250 now, and, and he's uh, being an impact in blocking, but all three of those guys are doing a good job. Um, Ty Chandler's really fast. You can tell he's played in the Alabama game, the Florida game, the, the Georgia game. He, he's played against Auburn. He's played in a lot of games, so he's not going to uh, get the big eyes when he walks out on the field for the first time. And he can catch. He's fast. He's about 209 pounds, so uh, I'm really, really glad that he's here. Uh, in, in evaluating the running backs, we really can't yet. It's still too early, uh, but all the guys still have a chance. They're, they're still competing. Um, we're working really, really hard on special teams this spring. We feel like it's uh, we, the addition of Larry Porter, who was a great special teams coach at Auburn, along with J uh, Javon DeWitt, has uh, really strengthened us in that area. And, um, and we're working really, really hard. And because we should have more depth, we should be able to put better players on special teams. And it's one of the things that was heard across the country last year, uh, uh, a lot of things were affected, but I thought penalties and, and special teams probably had as big an effect as any because special teams were poor and a lot of people had more penalties than, um, than, than we needed. And in the spring, you really work on punt and punt return, punt block more than anything else. But we've got to start blocking some punts because we, have, we haven't done that since we've been here. And, and that's a, an area that we can start winning games in. And, um, and, and uh, our pro day went really well. Coach Moody did a, an amazing job. These young people are lucky to have him here because he's got so many contacts with the NFL and uh, he gets it. He knows what they want. So he, he runs it like the combine. And he told me that uh, you, you always worry about some guys may help their, their draft status. Some may get hurt uh, with pro day. Daryl thought all of ours uh, either improved their status or stayed the same. Nobody hurt themselves. So that's what you uh, what you need. Uh, questions? Okay, group, if you have a question, again, please use the raise hand function. Uh, our first question for coach comes from Greg Barnes. Go ahead, Greg. Good morning, Mac. Uh, you, Greg. You've placed an emphasis on building, Greg, I've emphasis lost on, on building depth. Uh, you've done this for a Can't hear you. Can you? <clears throat> Craig, we'll, okay, uh, we'll try to did, get back to you real quick. Did you ask about, uh, okay, yeah, emphasis on depth. Is that, I heard a little of it, not much. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, I, I thought that in the um, a Texas A&M game, in the Notre Dame game, we definitely got beaten down late in the game by big bodies. And, and we weren't as effective in the fourth quarter of those two games when we had a chance to win. 
and and uh, I thought it was both sides of the ball. So uh, we we talk about it all the time, but we have a legitimate chance now to to get eight to ten offensive linemen that can play, and we'd really like to have eight so we can rest the other guys. And and you easy is not out there this spring, but with uh, easy and hopefully the addition of uh, William Barnes and then um, Corey and Johnson. That would give you a chance to have eight right there, and and then hopefully some would come through. Same thing with the defensive line. We we went 24 periods on uh, Saturday. We went uh, five minute periods. We went 24 five minute periods again today. I thought the defensive linemen, some of them got tired. They're big on Saturday. So uh, hopefully we can have guys that uh, can rest. We've told them you start putting your hands on your hips, or you don't chase the ball. We're taking you out. So so you determine how many plays you can play. And then the, the, the players have to get the, the coaches enough confidence that they're going to put them in the games to play because it's easy to have those guys, but you got to play them. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm, we're, we're not practicing uh, the super seniors a lot. They get some, but we're really forcing ourselves to look at all the younger guys and, um, and see what they can do for us. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Greg. Okay, uh, over to CL Brown. Hey, Mac, I was curious uh, if you could kind of update us on on the status of, of Storm Duck, how he's coming along. And, and I was wondering in his absence, kind of, you know, towards the end of the last season coming into the spring, if if Tony Grimes has kind of emerged as, as uh, for lack of a better phrase, the number one corner. Uh, CL, I, I should have mentioned the corners when I was talking about who's doing well. Uh, they have really attacked our receivers, and that'll that'll help us at receiver because you've got Chopper out, you've got uh, Bo Corrales out, so it's forcing young receivers to step up and 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 play, and they're playing against really high level corners right now. Um, Storm uh, tweaked the lower leg a little bit uh, on Saturday, so he didn't practice today. We need him back out there, but Kyler McMichael, um, Tony Grimes, and uh, uh, DeAndre Hollins are all doing a great job, and you've got uh, Obi uh, that that keeps competing and fighting for that position as well. So uh, we're starting to develop some depth there, which we need for whatever reason. We've had injuries there uh, at every time, but uh, Kyler McMichael's improved a lot. Um, I do think uh, he and Storm and Tony have a chance to be really special. Over to Ross Martin. Hey, Mac. We learned that uh, Joffrey Brown's out for the spring. And kind of looking at the depth chart, you know, you lose Diami and Daz. And for y'all's offense, you really need that deep threat. So I was wondering kind of who y'all are turned to this year to really stretch the field. Who do you think can be that deep threat, um, that speedster on the outside for y'all? Thank you, Ross. Uh, it, it's a, a question that we're struggling with right now because we – um, you, you lose two of the best players in the conference or the country. And, and then you, you've got Bo and Chopri that will be back for the summer, <clears throat> excuse me, in the fall, hopefully. Um, and Josh Downs looks great. He doesn't look good. He's our best receiver at, at this point. Uh, after four days, he did the same thing today that he did on Saturday. So we're really excited about him. Um, Gavin Blackwell had an appendix taken out, so he's been slowed. So hopefully he'll he'll be back out there soon. We think he'll be out there after Easter for sure. He's running routes and stuff now, but he hasn't had any contact. Um, uh, J.J. Jones made some plays on Saturday, and and uh, I thought uh, Antoine Green had his best day today. He struggled some on Saturday. So um, Emory Simmons has got to keep coming. Um, you 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 look at. Uh, they're, they're really looking at Justin Olson and, and um, Tylee Kraft, um, Antoine Green, Stephen Gosnell, who's just coming off of a, a growing injury like, um, uh, like Bo had. Uh, but they're, they're looking at those guys along with the young guys uh, to see who we should have up there on those outside positions. And um, Josh is going to be our slot. Now we got to find a couple of guys to help him. And then who do you go outside with? We know Bo's probably going to be one of those. Uh, Chopper would have been, and, and now he's got to get back because he's going to miss a lot of work without having two springs in a row. 
Uh, but I think the, the biggest question mark right now, we're pretty settled on defense with depth. Young one's got to work in, but we know who's going to play right now, we would think. But on offense, we <clears throat> offensive line, we're settled. We know who the starting quarterback is, but we don't know who the running backs are, and we don't know who the receivers are. Uh, we know who the tight ends are. So we've really got to, to use the last, um, what, uh, 11 days of spring to separate those running backs and separate those wide receivers. And, and that's a real focus for us. Uh, because we, we went over it all in a staff meeting yesterday. And, and, and right now, nobody has stepped up outside at those receiver spots, and they've got to. Thanks, Mac. Thank you, Ross. J.B. Ricks, go ahead. Thanks, Mark. Hey, good morning, Mac. Um, forgive me, but I want to go back to the, uh, the, the turnout that you guys had for, for the pro day yesterday. Uh, the 31 teams were there. Uh, um, loads of talent to put on display. What, what, it is, what does it say about the Carolina program and its current status right now as far as, you know, bringing top-tier talent, you know, to the field uh, week in and week out for you guys? Yeah, th thank you, JB. I, I thought yesterday was good. We had a lot of coaches that were running the drills from the NFL. <clears throat> Excuse me. We had um, – um, uh, a lot of our team was there. If they weren't in class, they were all there watching. Uh, the parents uh, were, were obviously on, the, on Zoom with the agents and the, the financial advisors. Uh, but uh, I, I thought it was a great day. And that uh, uh, what it reminded me is that we're losing four really good offensive players. And we were running up and down the field last year, but we don't have those guys. And those guys are really good. And the, um, the scouts were even oohing and eyeing about them. And um, I think it's uh, such a positive for our program. And, and of course, Chaz, we feel like will be a, a highly drafted uh, linebacker as well. Uh, but to see the development of those young guys since we've been here and to see what our staff's done with them uh, is, is really, really uh, exciting for me, uh, good for them. And I think those guys are going to be drafted high and make a lot of money. And it's, uh, it helps us in recruiting. It helps our current players because every player wants to be in the NFL. So our, our guys that were out here, we're looking at all the drills and, and, and seeing how good you have to be to get their attention. And, and I, I do think that that's why Pro Day can be such a positive for your team moving forward. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, JB. Over to Gregory Hall. Mac, last week you said that the competition on the defensive line is probably going to be the most fun to watch this spring. I just wanted to get your thoughts on on the first four spring practices and how how that's going. Yeah, uh, Greg, we we look better. Uh, just lining up, we we look better, and you've got a number of those guys that we think can play, and now we've got to get them to play uh, with full intensity at all time and. And, and just be flying around on the field like their hair's on fire. It's just they, they, they can't take a lazy step. Um, uh, the, the two young ones, uh, Keyshawn uh, Silver, uh, has been slowed by a, a lower leg injury. Uh, and he didn't get to do much Thursday. He didn't do much again today. So we've got to get him back because he looked really good uh, in, the, in the shorts periods before somebody rolled into him. Um, uh, Ritzy is really fast. He's quick. He's, uh, he's doing a great job with pass rushing. And, and, you know, here's a guy six, five, two eighty five or something and can really run. And, and then we haven't seen uh, KJ Binkley and he's at three twenty five, and he's coming off of that injury. So he's been slowed some and we're being careful with him, but he's also got such strength in there and he's, he's, uh, such a big body inside. So I think the biggest thing, Greg, is, is we're going to be, uh, bigger bodies overall at, at, uh, in the offensive line. Uh, and the fact that uh, um, Diego Pounds has done some really good things. He's 6'6", 325, 335, excuse me, and can got great feet and can run. Uh, we're just going to be a bigger team, and we're going to be a big-bodied team. And I think that's what I'm seeing with the, with the defensive front. When you start looking at the, uh, just standing around with those, two, those three I mentioned, and then – you start looking at what Miles Murphy looks like, um, and and then you you've got uh, big bodies anyway with Kevin Hester, and uh, Ray Bahasic's over 300 pounds and he looks little in there. Um, so there's just uh, uh, you've got Varner, you've got Jalil Taylor, 
uh, we've got we got more bodies that we can work with in the spring than we've had. And I should have mentioned too, uh, Chris Collins seems much better. He's he's more fluid. He's running better. He's got more confidence. And uh, Desmond Evans, who's uh, at 265 now, had by far his best day on Saturday. Uh, I'll get to watch the video today, but Saturday was the, the first time I've really seen Des where uh, I thought he had a dominating practice. Okay, Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey coach, uh, last year, obviously a lot of the freshmen, they didn't have a typical you know spring for the early enrollees and summer for the rest of the kids, but a lot of them got decent number of reps during the season. What are the couple of things that have really kind of popped out to you about the second year kids, how they're different now than they were a year ago? Andrew, it's it's a, another great question. I think the, the biggest thing is that uh, just their confidence. Those kids didn't have, even the early enrollees last year had a little bit of an off season program and then it's just cut off. So they went through the shock and the unknown um, and, and then came back in summer and then we had our COVID spike and then we had to stop practice at some point uh, in, in preseason, right? But we didn't get to have a scrimmage, the big scrimmage we wanted before Syracuse. Um, but they've really matured and they're more confident now and they, they know who they are. And, and that's really helped us. Uh, and then you, you even take these, uh, the, the 12 guys that are in early, you can tell a difference in their practice today than that first one. They're growing fast. I mean, Ra Ra Dilworth and, and Power were all over the place today, and, and they weren't Saturday. Um, so there, there's, I think, more than anything else, it, it just makes sense for all of us. The more experience you get, especially if it's positive experience, uh, then the, the more confidence you have and the better you play. I told the guys after practice, we had Nate Brown out here today, and we had Jeff Saturday, and it's great to see them. But I told them after practice that, um, you can't come out here and not be ready to go anymore. You, you, you have to be full speed or you're going to get exposed. And it, it, it's getting more like it was when I left. You, you're competing against really good players that'll be as good or better than most you're going to play against on Saturday. So don't come out here and stand around because you are going to get embarrassed. And I saw two offensive linemen just get run over in pass rush today by the defensive linemen. That's embarrassing. But that, but they better come and they better bring it because they're they're just competing against better players. And now, as coaches, we have to make sure that we show them who is giving us full effort, and that we show them who's not, and separate those guys. And if you don't, if you're not giving full effort, you're not going to get as much playing time. And the other thing that happens now is, uh, if a guy is is sore and has some pain and can't practice, he's going to get moved down. So you're going to have to fight through some soreness. If you're injured, you, you shouldn't play. Uh, but if you're sore, you, you need to fight through it and, and practice if you want to play. I have to ask a follow-up. Uh, how do you gauge that in the spring as opposed to the fall? Is it the same? Is it now when you maybe learn what guys have that little extra layer of edge? Or, or is that something that maybe stands out a little bit more once you get back in the fall? No, you learn it right now because it's not as cool to play right now. It's not as much fun. There's not as much hype, and uh, you got to go to work, and 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 you've got to force yourself into to being excited for these 15 days, and uh, it's a really important 15 days. This is the most important 15 days we've had. It it uh, amazed me when I was told that only 21 scholarship players have ever been through a spring practice. It, it's amazing, uh, and, and that just shows you how young we are. But the other thing is that people have talked about doing away with spring practice for years. I think last year was a, a, a real strong reason for not doing away with it. We need it for teaching. And, and the older guys can, can do drills and they can watch. We put them in a little bit. But the older guys are coaching the younger guys. And the younger guys have to have the, the fundamentals taught to them, uh, how to tackle and and where to put your head and all the things that they need to know before they go full speed against a, another team uh, to be safe. So I've never felt like it's uh, more important to have spring practice than now after not having it last year. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you.
Okay, Dennis King, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Thank you hey, for uh, letting us all come Saturday. I really enjoyed it, seeing the guys in action. My observation was a lot of energy, confidence, moxie with the program. Just want your thoughts on that. Dana, I think it. I think that's fair. Um, we, we've got more uh, in four practices this year. We've, we've got at least as much or more energy than we've had uh, in some previous years. And I, I, I really applaud the guys for that. Uh, and there is more pressure on them to play now. It's going to be harder to play because they're, they're, they've got to embrace the depth on this team. And, and they've got to want others to do well. And there's a lot of competition between offense and defense. We're, we're having fights now. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell them. I've got football on my, my sweatshirt here. I don't have fighting. Uh, so all you can do is break a hand or, and don't take your helmet off for sure. Uh, you can break a hand, get a 15-yard penalty, or get kicked out of the game. So uh, don't be stupid and fight. Compete. And there's a difference. But there's a, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of competition. Uh, we're going blue against blue all the time. And, and when you do that, even in an inside run now, it's a fight. They, they, they compete really, really hard. So it's, it's more fun to watch than it's ever been. There's not one side of the ball that has the upper hand right now on the other. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Art Chansky, go ahead. Hey, Mac. Um, you've, always been, you've, you've always been a great ambassador for the sport of football. And uh, right now, it just, <clears throat> from the outside, it would seem that the transfer portal is going crazy. The agents are running amok. Um, are you worried you're going to thank we're going to have you for at least five more years. Uh, are you worried about the future of the sport and, you know, in your overall view of it, do you think commissioners and at least football and basketball might, might be good to handle some of the things that the NCAA either isn't handling or, or can handle right correctly? Art, I, I am concerned about some things that are happening. We're, we're talking about name, image, and likeness, and none of us know what that means. We're trying to help young guys brand themselves, and, and, and we've got a lot of pieces in place already, and I'm proud of Bubba. He's putting forth funds, and we're really trying to stay ahead of it, but none of us know exactly what it means, and, and it, it's, uh, it's dangerous. It was just thrown on the athletics directors and the coaches without, without guidelines. And the same thing with the transfer portal. You, you can check the numbers. I probably I haven't stayed up with it because we're not big transfer portal people. But I think there's over 2,000 young people in the transfer portal for football. And I think the number was only 37 point something percent last year found a better place to go. So the, the great players that are mad and want to transfer somewhere else, I got it. That, that, the, the backup quarterback that's frustrated, he wants to transfer somewhere else, I've got it. But technically, uh, the way it is right now, they have to declare, the way I understand it, uh, the proposal is they have to declare before May 1st. Well, we finish uh, practice, spring, spring game, April 24th. So let's just facetiously say that um, Sam Howell walks into us and says, I'm transferring to Virginia Tech. Uh, and we open up with Virginia Tech. I mean, that, that is a, a real possibility now um, with, with players. Sam's not going to transfer, uh, but it, it's real and it's there. Or let's say that a team has three running backs and kind of like what happened to us for the Orange Bowl, all three of those running backs get mad at the running backs coach and they come in and say they want to transfer. And you're in, in May now and you don't have any running backs on your team. What do you do? You have to go to the transfer portal to try to find somebody to, to have enough players to play. So I'm, I'm afraid that we're encouraging there, – there's some positives with the transfer portal, but I'm afraid that we're encouraging young people at the first sign of something negative that I'm not playing or I have to compete uh, or my coach got on me that, that they're going to run. And, and that's not a good message. And I'm afraid we've got some of that right now, and I'm, I'm really concerned about it moving forward. Our coaches asked me the other day, how do you coach modern day with the transfer portal? And my answer was very simple. You, you recruit close to home, 
you recruit young people that fit your place and want to be here, and then you treat them fairly. And, and that's the, the only thing that we can do. And we've told every young man, Art, if you're not happy with your playing time here um, and it may not improve and you want to transfer, let's try to get you to graduate and, and then we'll help you go somewhere else. And that's just the way we've, we've tried to handle it. Is there a second part of it? Is there a, another structure that you could see in the future that could handle this a little better? Yes, I, I would love to. Uh, I think basketball is in a better place right now, even after the FBI cleaned some things up. Uh, their rules are different. They're, they're more practical. They make more common sense than, than some of our rules. So we need some rules cleaned up. Uh, and I have said without question, uh, I think we need a commissioner of college football uh, universally. We, we need to have rules uh, that are, are all translated the same way, different not only do different leagues translate rules differently, um, different universities translate rules differently. So I'd like to get all of this under one umbrella and, and have our commissioners very involved because that's where our money goes and, and start looking at the book and, and tweaking some rules like they need to be tweaked. Uh, some of them are just totally absurd um, and, and not have any rules in there that, that we can't make sure that, that we, we can understand who's following them and who's not. If, if the NCAA can't follow whether somebody's breaking the rules or not, throw the rule out. Let, let's, let's change it. Let, let's don't allow people, some people that don't care about the rules and they know they're not going to be caught, they, they break them and they have advantages. And uh, I'd like to see it where people that break rules don't have advantages. Thanks, Mac. Great stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll close today with uh, Luke Buxton. Go ahead, Luke. Hey, Coach Brown. Got a kind of fun question in today's press conference. I've been scrolling through Instagram and notice you've been posting a lot of sneaker picks, new new Jumpman shoes. I'm curious if you got any input from the players on the shoes and if, if what their comments are. And also, Roy Williams has also been breaking out a lot of new Jumpman shoes. Has there been on any conversation between you two about any uh, new Jumpman releases? No, the, the first thing is Coach Williams and I have not talked about our shoes, but I will say that I've got to pick the shoe game up every day. That's the one for today. A little bit of a throwback, so the guys call me old with this one, but that's okay. I can handle that. Um, but And I, I do – Jordan Tucker started it. I walked in one day, and I didn't have Jordan's on, and he said, this is embarrassing. You don't even have Jordan's on and we're a Jordan brand school. So I said, okay, then, then I'll start wearing a different pair every day. So now they watch and now they comment. And uh, uh, they said, hey, coach drip, man, drip. And I thought, okay, what does that mean? So I had to figure that out. And then after I figured out it was good, I like it now. So, uh, but as I walk in, they all say, huh, like those coach, eh, game's not as good today. So. Uh, so that, that's what we, that's how this happened, Luke. It's just, uh, uh, it's just a product of those guys having a good time with me. Concord 11s are a classic. So Concord 11s track. are classic and, and I have a closet full. Oh my gosh. Um, even coach Bly is mad at me now because he tells all the coaches and players all the time, you know, I was one of the original Jordan men, uh, athletes. Um, and, and we say, yeah, Dre, we've heard that about. 87,000 times in the last two years. So I walk in now and say, when, he, when I get a new pair, I say, do you have any of these, Dre? Where'd you get that, man? They haven't given me my shoes yet. So, so we're, we're, we have some fun with our shoes and, and we're so fortunate to be one of the schools that, that gets the Jordan brand shoes. It, it's really a, a help in recruiting. It's amazing to me how much these young people love their shoes. Thanks, Mac. Thank you, Luke. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. We always appreciate it. Thank you, folks. I'll see you. Have a happy Easter because I probably won't see you before then, and, and we'll see you next week.